For the AP projection of the shoulder with external rotation, the humeral epicondyles are placed parallel to the image receptor. The central ray for this projection is perpendicular to a point one inch inferior to the coracoid process. If the epicondyles are placed parallel, then at the proximal end of the humerus, you would see the humeral head demonstrated in profile as well as the greater tubercle. So we should see that nice crisp outline of that greater tubercle on the lateral aspect. And the lesser tubercle would be superimposed on the humeral head. For the AP projection of the shoulder with neutral rotation, the epicondyle should be placed at approximately 45 degrees. If they are placed at 45 degrees, then at the proximal end, we would expect nothing to be in profile. So neutral starts with N and nothing starts with N. For the AP projection of the shoulder with internal rotation, we would want those epicondyles placed perpendicular to the image receptor. So you can have the back of the hand resting on the leg. If those epicondyles are properly placed perpendicular to the image receptor, then at the proximal end, we would expect to see the lesser tubercle demonstrated in profile on the medial aspect of the humerus. For the AP oblique projection of the shoulder, we want to ensure that the line from the acromial tip to the superior angle of the scapula is parallel to the image receptor. This should place the patient between 35 and 45 degrees of rotation. The central ray is perpendicular to the glenoid cavity. This is located approximately 5 cm inferiorly and 5 cm medially from the superolateral border of the shoulder. We want to ensure that there is nice tight collimation so we see clear demonstration of the relevant structures. Looking at the skeleton, we can see how that landmarking technique will get us centered over top of the glenoid cavity. As well, if we have a look at the superior angle of the scapula and the tip of the acromion, we can see how those structures form a parallel line with the plane of the IR so that we will see the glenoid cavity nicely demonstrated in profile and the scapulohumeral joint demonstrated open. For the PA oblique projection of the shoulder or the transscapular Y, locate the superior angle of the scapula and then locate the tip of the acromion at the lateral end of the clavicle and then form that line between them. For this one, we want that line perpendicular to the end. For the PA oblique projection of the shoulder, you want to locate the superior angle of the scapula and the tip of the acromion, draw an imaginary line between these two structures and place that line perpendicular to the image receptor. This should result in the patient being rotated 45 to 60 degrees from the plane of the IR. The central ray for this projection is perpendicular to the scapulohumeral joint. The central ray should be entering the medial border of the scapula and exiting the humeral head. Your middle crosshair line that is vertical should be tracing along that medial border of the scapula. Palpate to check and ensure that the inferior angle of the scapula is included in your collimated field. You can see on the surface of the patient that the collimation appears quite large, but if you have the patient step away, you can see that it's much smaller on the detector. This is due to the distortion of light that occurs when our patient is obliqued. This medial border of the scapula is where you want that central crosshair. The superior angle of the scapula to the acromial tip is what should be perpendicular. With correct positioning, the medial and lateral borders would be superimposed on the image.